So by the way, I record all the demos and lectures and stuff that we do in here, I record them and I put them on a YouTube channel. So like if you miss class or like um, you wanna go back and look at how to do stuff, um, there's a YouTube, Richland Game has their own YouTube channel and all the videos get posted on there. Okay? What's that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So everybody's got Unreal open. Let's go ahead and get started here. Um, if you click on Unreal Engine and uh, you click, uh, there's a yellow launch button. Go ahead and uh, switch it to 4.12 and then hit launch. Just gonna hang up. And also, let's go ahead and go to the marketplace. And I want you to download some stuff. Um, what was the name of that asset pack that we used? Or maybe it's in the library. Yeah, go to your, your library. And um, let's go ahead and grab the Infinity Blade Icelands. So there's a button that says add to project. And I think you may have to wait until the Unreal launches here in order to add it, but because you have to pick a project to add it to. So just wait till Unreal launches and then add it to the project. Yeah. Yeah, so like these days, there's so much stuff out there, and you can like buy it, and it's like royalty free or whatever. Like once you pay like fifty bucks or something, like um, it takes a long time to make game assets, especially like art assets and stuff. So like these days, like kind of when I tell people that like want to start their own company and do their own thing, is like make a game that's like where you just as quick as possible and like put it out there and like make money off of it you don't have to make your dream game right away like just make something and learn and get through the process and then start making some money and then the next project can be your halo or your whatever you know what I'm saying because like starting off and trying to make like devil may cry your first game is like taking on it's like trying to go shoot Lord of the Rings when you've never done a movie before. You know what I mean? Yeah, like like there's a game called. Um, have you guys heard of Crossy Road? <laughs> Crossy Road. I love the Crossy Road story. These guys are just. And somebody else said Castle Crashers in here. I love Castle Crashers. I think that's a great game. It's a 2D side scroller hack and slash. Does everybody know what Castle Crashers is? Um, I'll just show it here because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, you just search for it under the marketplace. It's called the Infinity Blade Grasslands or Icelands. Mm. Um, okay, so when you have new project pop up, um, I want you guys to do, go to new project and do third person. And um, I want you to make your own directory on the D drive for your name. So make a directory on the D drive for your name and name your project. Um, your name is fine. And just hit create project. And we want starter content. And Mac's going to be coming around to help you guys. No, Mac. Is Richland one? No, just do whatever you want to do. She needs the real login. <laughs> As you can see, Chris Tyler spent you did so more. <laughs> Tyson. Spent yeah, make a new As project. you can see, we do have our original uh, character person, or colors: red, green, project. orangeish, yellow, and blue. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, so make I, a, is that who we're gonna meet? On the is everyone okay with that, or does anyone want to change it up? I like my color. Um, I'm yeah, all right with my color. Red and red and. Huh? 
Uh, orange are the uh, best out of the four. The I think you're stupid. Whatever, D. All right, I guys. think your name is Tyler. Thanks, Spencer. You will not catch a level 100 Gyarados. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, thanks, man. All right, guys. So, um, yeah, this I game is a level 146 one. This is a hack and Cinnabar slash I'm game. Uh, it's pretty fun. Right, team. All right. You know how to air Because it's a hack. All right, so this like is Castle Crashers. Yeah, Castle Crashers story is. Uh, I see no. Okay, guys. Was, guys, look, I'm really oh, I thought I had a lot of Basically made a 2D side I have a hatchet. Uh oh. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Oh, look, look. Fail um, controller, everybody. Uh, wait, like it's fine. Now. From a developer. Look what I got. I got an apple. Right? Oh, yeah. Not even right, cool. What was up with that? Oh, wait. My controller Does it get stuck there? Like there? Not really. It just you need to wash around um, with some. I don't know what it is. So anyway, well, these guys tell you some tips. Fudge packer. Fudge packer. I can tell you how to use your magic. Okay. All right. Okay. Art. Uh, so this company it was like I think it was like three guys, and uh, now they have this massive company, and they're doing all kinds of Castle Crusher stuff, and just really really great. They went on um, Xbox and did a bunch of stuff, but they made a ton of money. But the yeah, so you don't have to make some crazy huge game for your first game. I don't recommend that at all, actually. Okay, is everybody here? Everybody, make it here. So how did you start with this game? Yeah, so when you have a new project and it comes up like this, you go back to your, uh, you want to add Infinity Blade Ice Lands, and then you pick the project and hit Add to Project. Okay? And guys, um, if you have questions and you're, you're having a hard time or something like that, ask the person next to you. We are, we're all buddies here, we're all friends, everybody's here to help, so if you get lost, um, ask someone next to you. You need help? Yeah. What's up? Uh, I got the time period it's running, so I thought it was supposed to come here at one thirty. so it's about to 30. Well, brother, I would just grab a seat. Um, okay. Yeah, I would just grab a seat and just kind of watch. I'm recording this, so... Um, well, that's downloading. I'll go over some stuff. Is everybody good? Everybody's good? Anybody need any help? You think you're there? <clears throat> okay. Can you see this? Can everybody see this screen? So there's multiple screens. You've got the actual game program, and then you have um, the launcher, okay? And the launcher holds the marketplace, and, like, it shows your project and, like, some stuff in here, but we don't really mess around in here too much. Um, this is the main kind of program that we're going to be in. Um, so let me let me teach you guys how to use this a little bit. Okay, first and foremost, up at the top where it says play, go ahead and hit play. And then you're going to use W, S, A, and D on the keyboard. Okay? W, S, A, D. And spacebar jumps. I don't think this dude crouches. Okay. Um, now, if you hit F11 on your keyboard, it will bring it into full screen. F11. Is everybody here? If you're not here, please get here. I'm still waiting for the video to install. You don't have to. You don't need that to do this. Uh. So hit play and hit F11. 
Uh, I'm not sure. Doesn't look like it. All right. So if you hit escape, it will stop the game. Okay. And when you're in this view, uh, if you hold the right mouse button, uh, so everybody hit escape. Hold the right mouse button down and use WSAD. That will allow you to fly around. Okay, hold the right mouse button down and use WSAD. And you can fly around in the world. So while you're flying around in the world, if you use your mouse wheel to scroll forwards and backwards, you can slow your speed of flight forwards or backwards. Okay, I'll say that one more time. As you're flying around, you can use your middle mouse wheel to slow your speed of flight or speed it up by scrolling forwards or backwards. Everybody with me so far? All right. So now when you're in fly around mode, if you hit hold down alt and then hit P, you will play again. Alt P will play again. All right. Now you can hit F11 and then hit <clears throat> and then hit escape. <coughs> All right. So when you're in this window, um basically the game works kind of like or this developing kind of works like a a 3D kind of like puzzle type deal. So see that that cube down there? Go ahead and click on that cube. And if you click W, E, and R on your keyboard with the cube selected, you'll see that there's move, rotate, and scale. Move, rotate, and scale. And you can move stuff. You can rotate it. And you can scale it. And there are settings for all this stuff in the, uh, if you go to edit, um, editor preferences. There's like settings in here for like how you can adjust the snapping on your rotating and the moving and stuff like that, if that makes sense. Uh, it's in edit up at the top, editor preferences. And there's all kinds of preferences in here. You can adjust your editor. You can do all kinds of stuff to have it just the way you like it. But you can move, scale, rotate do whatever. Now the reason why when that block was moved, why there's a black shadow underneath it, is because the way that the engine works, the way that the shadowing works in the engine, is two different ways. One, there's real-time lighting, which as you can see when you move the blocks, there's a shadow that follows it, and then there's also baked lighting. Okay, Baked lighting is like a lot faster uh, for the computer to process than real-time lighting. That makes sense. All right. Uh, so how's everybody doing on the Infinity download? Still going? OK. Um, let's go over a couple other things then. Um, so down below, you have your content manager. OK? And uh, I want you to go into, we're not going to cover a bunch of character stuff today, but I can show you a little bit of it. Um, if you go into content mannequin character mesh, there is something called the SK mannequin. If you double click on that, it will open up the character viewer. And I recommend like when you have multiple tabs open like this, you don't make your th one full screen and have one behind there. You grab the tab and pull that up into your main view so you can switch back and forth between your content manager and character manager or texture manager and what have you. Okay? Let so, me ask you, um, this one, um, the Epic Games, does it cost to download? Does it cost to run? No, it's free. And you can make a full game with it, but when you're done creating the game and you post it and you start making money, you have to pay 5% of your royalties. Oh, okay. So the character editor here is called Persona, and as you can see, when you're working with characters, you have three parts to the characters. I see your hand up. One second. Uh, you have the skeleton, 
which is a skeleton that's inside the characters. You have the mesh, which is the 3D object, and then you have the animation. Okay, and you can click back and forth between mesh, skeleton, and animation. For those of you guys that are lost in the content browser, I'm in content, mannequin, character, mesh, and I double clicked on SK mannequin. Up in the top, right hand? Top, yeah, top right corner. So I'm, I'm doing this as well. So if you guys get lost, just look up at the projector. All right, so uh, moving on here. Um, when you're in Persona here, if you go up to Show, there's a little Show button. Um, this has a lot of different options in there. Like for example, if you go to Show Bone All Hierarchy, you can see the skeleton that's in this character. So you can kind of like diagnose problems if you're having any issues. Um, if you click on the Animation tab, you can see the list of animations, and you can double click on those and he'll play his animations and you can cycle through them Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. He just opened up the, the wrong one by mistake. Okay. Also, is there a way to pan vertically? Uh, like move straight up? Yeah, move straight up. I don't know, man. Oh, yeah. Hold right click and left click. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, with the mouse. That's cool. Have, have you used Unreal before? It's pretty cool. How much does it take to download Unreal? Buddy, memory, memory wise. I have no idea. Oh. You, you're gonna have to. I don't know. Okay, so I'm. I get um a pro, like a full laptop. Memory space isn't that big, so downloading like I can barely download like maybe more than like two games, but it taking up a fair bit of memory. Yeah. Like, even if it's not that complicated, they, they still need to put a lot of memory. All right. So, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to teach you guys. Um, if you look over on the right hand side in the world outliner, um, you'll see all the things that are in the scene, and you can click those and select stuff. Um, Unreal has so much stuff, it's just ridiculous. Um, if you go to content, starter content, uh, props, go ahead and go into the content, starter content, props folder. Uh, you'll see that there's a bunch of props in there, and you can literally grab any of those props and just drag them into the scene and drop it. And then once you drag the props into the scene and hit play, your character can interact with those props. Some of these props have collisions, some of them don't. You can also double click those props and go into the mesh editor and just kind of see This mess editor's got a bunch of different stuff that you can do in here. Yes. Um, so everybody do this real quick. I want to show you something. Go ahead and there's a prop in there called SM Rock. Go ahead and click on that prop. Double click it. <coughs> 
and it's going to open it up in the uh, mesh editor here or whatever you call this thing and uh, over on the right hand side there is the uh, the material for this rock go ahead and double click on that material yeah the uh, it's like a little sphere mm -hmm. with uh, it says it's called M rock so this is the uh, the material editor and uh, you can see there's a bunch of nodes that kind of plug into stuff um, in any material that you have that you put on a 3d object uh, it all starts kind of over here you have a base color a metallic color specular which is shiny roughness and a normal map which is the bumps emissive is glow um, and basically you create nodes and you plug them into the textures here okay so I'm just moving around in this editor just using right click and my mouse wheel just right click and mouse wheel and again if you're not here go find that rock in content starter content props double click the rock and then over on the right hand side you'll see the material double click that there's a ton of options in here to make stuff look the way you want it to look and uh, but each one of these systems so the material the material program the uh, mesh <clears throat> the mesh editing program the animation program um, they're like their own thing and they're all like have a ton of options and a ton of stuff there's also a um, a particle effects editor in here there's a like a terrain editing thing like this program is like very very extensive and it has a lot of typically like there's a water editing system like if you can think of something you want to do this engine has it like if you're like I want to make water you just it's there if you're like I want to make space it's it's there it's it's pretty cool um, this download is taking forever is anybody's download finished yeah, you're done with fish? That's fast. Between, I think it's because of A, it's uh, school Wi Fi, so there are a ton of people using it. And yeah. Well, yeah, it is a school Wi Fi, so it's not very fast. All right, well, mine's still got a ways to go. Um, why don't we take a uh, 10 minute break or 15 minute break? Let's be back here at 2. Um, bathroom break, smoke break, vending machine break, whatever you got to do. And uh, be back here at 2, and we'll. We'll keep going, okay? Richland Game Videos. Uh, C++. What's up? I did, man. Alien Monster Bowling League. I didn't I probably know. Like where are you in like any of like any programs or you just No, I just kinda did my own thing. Do what now? I I don't know anything about it, man. Oh, that's cool. Can you get your hands on like a, a Wii U dev kit or something like that? Work on it on the computer. And 
a Blade Runner or something. Maybe better YouTube videos. Looks like they do YouTube videos. Yeah, just give me a second. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool to get hands on the... I have one for the video game. Send it. I don't have the rest of the software for it. What up is that? It's a the middle flex three. I have that exact same laptop, or I have I th I think I have the flex two. I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. What's up, Roderick? Nice. It has like a video. Yeah, I have that pretty much that same laptop. I really like it. Can that one fold all the way around? Yeah, it has a touch screen. Oh, dude, that's a yoga. That's not a flex. That's a flex three. It is? Yeah, the Flex series, the ones they make now, come with the... Oh, really? What's different about the yogas? I think the yogas um, are more towards... I want to say they're more towards the general consumer and these have a little bit more power in them. Oh, okay. Sure. Oh, okay. I think they're actually like merging them two back together because the Flex 4 came out like later in July and they're calling this the yoga Flex 4 now. Oh, so they join the brain? Yeah, they're starting to merge the That one has AMD. Is this intro? This is intro. I'm missing your project dev, man. Yeah, I was signing up for that. I believe it conflicted with my time schedule, which is why I couldn't get it this semester. Okay. But yeah, I, I have you at three for intro. Because isn't there a intro Didn't you take intro three? already? Mm -hmm. I didn't get to take it last year because the class is already full. You're like way ahead of intro. <laughs> I know, right? You just gotta like... <laughs> I gotta, still gotta get it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, well, I don't know. Did Josh tell you what uh, me and other level two guys are doing for the semester? No. Uh, what we plan on doing? Because uh, Ninja, he really wants to get a ledge common system going. And so we're going to work on that for our blueprints part of it. And for the level, me and Scott are going to build like a, a dense forest that's been manipulated by machines kind of level. Like the concept art we're going for is Venus from the game Destiny. Mm -hmm. How uh, it's like a dense forest planet, but it's been shaped by the machines over the centuries. So it's kind of like this mix between nature and technology. Roger, you just blew my mind. <laughs> Oh, you're talking about the thing where they sent a nuke into space and it blew up time or something. I mean, you can try to explain it to me. So, it takes place in like two different time periods past the blood period. I mean, yeah. Such as uh, basically everybody introduce themselves, their background. Um, uh, I went over some money stuff, uh, and then um, and then we just kind of started on this. So. If um, every computer in here works. Uh, some of them have some. There's th that one has an issue, but yeah, everything everything works. Um, where are you sitting? At? Where? Did, well, why don't you boot up the computer and yeah. there's a button on the top. He's always here. He's always working. What's up? How's it going? Huh? How's it going? Uh, it's going good. In class? Yeah, in fresh meat. Fresh meat. <laughs> fresh meat for the grinder. Huh? 
Yeah, you, should, you just you just have to be there. He's very afraid. Yes, sir. Be constrict here. I'll think about it. <laughs> Tell him. Depends. Are you going to be doing three modeling at all? I, I don't know. Sure. Excuse me. So I, I, I largely still don't know. I prefer the game. Like I said, I did 3D modeling because it's kind of texturing and everything. Uh, probably sooner hire someone. Probably just put them in my console or have them something else to say. Hey, who's taking 3D animation? Anybody taking 3D animation? Anybody? No? Okay. Who, who, are y'all taking it so far? Digital imaging. I think somebody said they took animation. Yeah. Should, we, should we take it? I mean, the 3D animation class here is taught by uh, uh, D.F. Yeah, Adley, who is the lead animator for the year box. I don't know. Good thing. Me? Uh, I like Far Cry. They were kind of torched. I don't know. Balancing is awesome. So, so I don't know about that. Was like, yeah, the balancing was kind of iffy at first because McCree was literally. You don't learn to teach yourself to this Yeah, but they tweeted this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. McCree's not that bad, but now it gets like ridiculous. Things, but yeah. I, I almost would prefer the form. Like, you would like a top <laughs> the top one of your players. Wanting like, that they didn't just like, okay, we're going to teach you about this feature of mine. Did you want to do all these things? And we're going to do this small thing together. So you know, it's it's like like it's good. Good. now you have to be able to take that thing and work on your big projects. We did two big projects. Obviously, we did everything we did. Yeah. So there are there's always four. Yeah. 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 That's a big thing. <laughs> you know what's funny? You sent me that email telling me yes, that looks good. And I've already sent it like the day before. You're that slow if you don't get my text. I got a lot going on, man. Classes have <laughs> classes started. By the way, was uh, the effects class on Thursday or Dude, Tuesday? Do you many classes there are now and how many professors there are now? crazy around here. Oh, shit. Somebody's cranky. Yeah, I'm cranky. Did you get your beauty sleep? Yeah, I got my beauty sleep. Don't Cheers. you like it when Micah comes around? I like seeing Micah. You know, I, like I miss you, man. 
Yeah. You like seeing me? No. Why not? No. Just kidding. Let's see a lot of me this <laughs> Do you want to show these guys the effects editor real quick? Sure. Show them for like 20 minutes? Or no, like five minutes? Five minutes? Yeah. Hey guys. He says 20 minutes and then five minutes. Hey, hey you guys. Um, just real quick. I'm, uh, for whatever. Um, Mustafa here is, uh, he's kind of been around this place for a while. He, um, he's a pretty good effects artist. He's going to do real well. I'm going to have him show y'all the, uh, the effects editor in Unreal because he's way, way better than I am. Uh, we also teach, um, we have visual effects classes here. We have visual effects one and two for games. Um, and they're taught by a guy named Ryan Bowden, who works, um, works at a company here in town called Real Effects. And uh, Ryan's worked on like movies at Weta, I I Weta in New Zealand and like all kinds of crazy stuff. And he teaches a program here called Houdini, uh, which is our visual effects program that ties into Unreal. <laughs> um, all right, so for the Cascade, that's the name of the uh, particle editor in Unreal. Uh, basically, if you're trying to do, there are like many and many kind of effects in the game industry. So basically, you, you can do like, okay, you can start with like smoke and all that. By doing so, like you go from a, like an outside program using fluid simulation, and you can make smoke, and then that smoke uh, you basically turn it to a flip book, um, like this. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Speak really loud and stuff. You want to teach this? No. <laughs> <laughs> um. Shit, I've never taught anyone <laughs> anything. Um, Alright, let me see. See, that's why I had come in here. I told you. <laughs> Alright. So, let's say you guys wanted to do a smoke effect, right? You would have to either do it in as a shader in, a, uh, in the material editor, or you could just do it by going into Houdini, Maya, or Max, even Blender, and make a fluid simulation. Um, you want me to show them that, or? Okay. So, I haven't used Maya in a while, so I'm just going to use Houdini. No, I'm just going to use the default. So. I don't have time to go all through all that. So you guys don't have to like try and follow along. Yeah, the don't. Trust me. Okay. It's the command prompt for it, but uh. No, because every time this has be free, so you have to accept and run. Why is it so slow? Alright. So, basically, when you're trying to do a simulation, I'm just going to use the default one. I'm not going to edit anything out of it. Um, 
sphere, right. higher effects. Let's say we, you guys need like the supervisor came in and like you need to do an explosion. So basically, make a container and emitter and. I'm not just gonna go into this. So basically, this is an explosion. This is the default uh, parameters that they have. You can just go in there, make a object, and go to the pyro effects and uh, pick an explosion, fireball, ability smoke tool. So taking this and basically setting up a camera right here and rendering out this whole simulation as a you know like frame by frame so you can just okay go out so basically you can just render out the range frames of the simulation So when you do that, basically you're gonna have like the frames uh, are gonna be like 72 pictures of see like this is just gonna render. After this is done, you're gonna export the simulation from this right here to like 72 pictures. After that you take it into Maya, uh, sorry, you take it into After Effects and then you make it into a flipbook as I'm showing right here. So basically a, fl a flipbook is a sprite sheet of pictures that basically animates the, the effect. So like this explosion right here. So you go to Fireball and this is the actual texture for it so that's all that it is as far as like trying to get a full simulation in that's not gonna happen because it's gonna take a lot of processing power so let's say I wanted to get this right here the whole thing it won't work because it will like kill your game basically that's why they created this way like as a sub UV textures so basically you go in into the uh, material editor, particle color, and the sub UV texture, and then you take it into here. So let's do a new one. Just gonna do this. So this is what's gonna look like when you. Uh, like the first time you actually get it into the editor because like it's a sheet so this is what's gonna happen so you have to actually get into the sub UVs sub image index and go and okay. that's new basically be like 64 frames that's uh, what it is and go here and like okay the sub UVs uh, uh, module over here you like you have to count how many rows and columns you have so you got one two three four five six and then one two three four five six so it's six by six so when you go in here uh, on the sub UV module you'd be like six by six so now you're just gonna see this you, you can just go over here and linear just turn off velocity and change this
So basically that's like one part of an explosion. Then you're gonna have the smoke, the light, the sparks, and uh, you know, if you're having in a scene where like the supervisor is like, okay, I need dust, rubbles, like shit flying around. It's basically the same thing in the movies, but doing it in the movies is like, uh, you have to like go into the post process, and, uh, sorry, the compositing and all that. So it's different from games. Um, as far as, uh, let's see, um, what else? Shit, I can't think of anything else. Okay. That's all you got? Yeah, I guess. Well, any questions for him on the visual effects stuff, you guys? Sorry, I'm not the, like, I'm not a good teacher, so <laughs> there are some stuff I can't explain. Like, good. What, what other kind of effects can you make with visual effects? Um, anything really, from OSP smoke to an explosion, to an if, like blood, water, um, what else, like uh, sandstorms and laser guns, uh, muzzle flashes. Here, let me actually... Explosion iron kit? Yeah, we can do anything. Even healing effects, healing, and actually... Did you have a question? So what I got from that is that the particle effects are based on 2D sprite sheets. Yes. And you can... You Depends can on... Or, or import those, you can... What were you going to say? Uh, it depends on the effect. The sometimes are shaders that are like... See, there are sh some shaders that can manipulate, they can manipulate in the Unreal Editor the material editor into having the same look as like an explosion or a fire let's say that's why like there are some people who would like like rather use shaders instead of the 2d sprite sheets and then you can basically configure those in the editor and make yes stuff. yeah so here You got the shock wave, the fireball, the sparks, the fire, and the smoke. 
basically when you have all that you okay so let me show you basically depends on the explosions uh, power so let's say actually let me show you so this fireball alone is a spawn of six right let's be crazy about it and be like 50 that's gonna get expensive so be mindful of your effects that's what I've been told every time when I make something because if it gets expensive your game will oh, shader complexity see that's new so basically see like this right here this graph I like this color thing. So if it's from green to like right here, it's great. But as far as going all the way here, when you see it, it's white. Like that's it. You have to actually go down because the more explosions you're gonna have, the m like okay, let's say this explosion has 50 emit, like it emits 50 sprite sheets at the same time. And then this explosion emits 70, and this and that. Basically, that's gonna affect your performance. So you have to be like, okay, I need six sprite here, one here, seven here. No more than that. So let me show you. You had a question? I guess so. So this is what I'm talking about. See how wide in the middle? That's not a good thing. They like because like some supervisors actually go around and see how your performance is going. So it have to be like See how it's not as bad. So you can have as much explosions as you want in one scene, but you have to be mindful of your performance about it. Thanks. <laughs> don't, don't close me. Okay, Roderick, you wanna? Um, all right, you guys. So Roderick is a uh, level designer here, and I'm gonna have him give a just a quick level design tutorial. Um, now I want you all to kind of try and follow along with him. Um, eventually, your first project, I'm gonna have you guys make your own level, okay? And I want you to go to go to content, and if you go into your content folder, you'll see something that says, "Hey, close that door." Something that says uh, "Infinity Blades Lands," okay? Click on "Infinity Blades Lands," and um, and then go to environments. Um, Actually, if you just click, if you're just in your Infinity Blades lands folder, um, you can click on filters, and you can go to uh, static mesh. If you do filters on the left and do static mesh, and basically, this will be tons of meshes that you can drag in to like populate your level like different walls and different props and stuff. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Um, and these, this is the kit I'm gonna have you guys use to make kind of your first level. Um, but level design is kind of its own animal. And um, I want you guys to kind of understand, Roderick's been doing it for a long time. I want you to kind of understand kind of the mentality behind it, so. What's up guys, my name's Roderick. I do levels day, night, and when I'm sleeping. But um, it's pretty taxing work because there's a mentality to it, and I just kind of jacked it up. But I'm going to just show you real quick what it's like to build a level and sort of, you know, just a small glimpse at the process of it. So as Chris was saying, he was dragging these props in here. In Unreal, we call them static meshes, and they're pre-built objects that you can use to populate your scene. And they're actually pretty handy because it takes a lot of the workload out of having to make them one by one. 
So I guess for this example, since we're all in this particular world, you can just go into your content browser and choose any object you like and just drag it into the scene. You can go ahead and try that right now. I know it's kind of hard to see what's going on on my particular screen, but um, just drag any object in there. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for it to load in, but once it does load in, just drop it in there and you're pretty much good to go. You can hit play afterwards and just run around fully colliding with the object even though that's not always guaranteed and you can make as many as you want you can duplicate them by holding the alt key and dragging you could control click and then duplicate there's so many things rotate I can go on for a while for many things you could do with just one simple object to make it into a variety of different scenes and one thing I like about Unreal is the flexibility it gives you when you're building your levels to where you can prototype even faster using something called BSP. Now, some of you may have heard of it before, but it's really its own thing. It's kind of an old school way of building levels. Unfortunately, Unity doesn't have it built in. You have to get a plug in, but here in Unreal, it is built right into the editor. So here on the left side, you'll see something about objects. If you go to geometry, you could choose between a lot of primitives like boxes, cones, cylinders, and they're really useful. You could just drag them in like a static mesh, but unlike a static mesh, it is completely editable down to its core components. So you can set the X, Y, Z components, like X, I can make it 500 instead of 200, and it'll change accordingly. But it doesn't stop there. We also have it to where, if I just copy this real quick, holding the Alt key, there's a panel over here that says brush type. The ones I'm using right now are additive. They add mass into the scene. But there's also subtractive, which is just the opposite, cutting out. So you can drag it, move it around, and you see how it cuts through the BSP? With the static mesh, you would take forever to build that and prototype it if you don't like it. But with BSP, you get to get a brief glimpse of where you want to go with your project and that way once you get to a more concrete state you can go to your modelers and be like hey I want something like this after you've went through about five six times and looked at the level looked at the scene and figured out what you wanted and once again it's completely collidable I can walk up on it as you can see he goes through the empty space no problem jumps collisions physics all of that and it's really a simple process the complicated things start coming in once you start adding a bunch of things into the scene you know there's a lot of things to consider like performance management like Mustafa was saying about the shader effects and the particles a lot of that has to do with levels too you don't want too much in your scene but as long as you're mindful of how much is in there and what's going on you'll be okay like I don't think there's really a bad way to build a level as long as you have a general idea of where you want to take it and that's kind of where my philosophy is when building levels. And that's really how I feel about it. Um, one more thing I'm going to show you real quick before I give it to Chris is just how nice you can make it look. Um, here in the content folder, you see Infinity Blade Icelands. Um, if you have your filter on, you can go ahead and deselect it by clicking this area right here. And it'll bring me back to my folders. But for this particular example, we want to go to materials. So you go to filters and click on materials. And as you can see, a bunch of different things popped up. These are things that you can add to meshes and to your BSP really easily. Like if I take this, just something random, give it a second to load, drop it on there, bam, already got it textured. Same thing with this object, change the texture on it really simple and easy way to prototype things and once you start getting more into your levels it starts seeing the scope of what you're doing the materials become very important because they can even turn things like this simple cruddy looking BSP into something to really fill the scene I wouldn't recommend building an entire level out of BSP but it's definitely great for you to take care of the majority in terms of block offs and walls and other minute things that you know it would just be time consuming to go and make a model for like I said I could go all day on things you could do with level design and the way you could take it but it all boils down to what 
you want to do with it. And there, trust me, there's a lot of tools in this editor that'll get you going. <laughs> there is too many. I'm still learning all of them. And I've been playing with this editor for about four years now, and I still haven't learned everything. But um, that's pretty much all I got. Any, any questions for him, you guys, on level design stuff? Ask him now because I'm a, you guys, are, that's your first project is making your own levels. So if you got any questions, it's a good time to do it. What's a block out? Good question. So, simple way to, to answer what is a block out that's when you take your scene and build most of it with BSP. As you heard me say just a few seconds ago, I said it's not a good idea to build your entire level out of BSP, but that really comes to when it's the final project. When you're really doing prototypes and testing, it's really good to have BSP because it's so easy to move around, it's so easy to manipulate. If you mess up, you can just control Z, or you can just delete it all together. If you mess up, you can change the sizes, change the shapes. You can construe it as well, or construe, there's a word I'm missing, but that. Just change the properties of it all together, you know. BSP lets you do a lot, and with blockouts, they become very important when you're going through the prototyping stage. And then once you get to the point to where you're ready to add meshes in there, that's when you swap out the BSP for much prettier looking things that you would have the modelers do. Or you yourself if you're a modeler as well. So that's pretty much what a blockout is. Any other questions for Roger, you guys? Is there a way to apply, apply a texture to an entire BSP at once? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and delete this subtractive brush, and I'm going to go ahead and use this. Usually by default, you can only apply it to one face at a time. But there's different ways of getting it applied to the entire face. I believe there's a hotkey for it as well, but I can't remember what it is. Another easy way is to go to this panel over here once you have your BSP selected. And where it says geometry, you would go to select. And you could say adjacent surfaces, coplanar, wall, slant. So all adjacent surfaces is all the surfaces connected to that BSP. And then when you drag the particular material on there, it will apply to the entire thing. And you can also hold control and select multiple faces at once if you plan on doing only a couple at a time. But this is a different way of getting them put all on the same place at once. And it covers per face, so it'll cover the entire face with the material and not just a particular section. There's a way to get around that, but that's more advanced stuff. Anything else? Thanks, Brian. All right, you guys. Uh, we got about 30 minutes or so left. Um, I just want you guys to kind of start on your level. So take all these shapes and these objects and uh, make me a cool level. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll do exactly.